Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology and Power Square Mall in Mesa, Arizona. Now this is a mall that I've covered a few times over the years on the channel and this will probably serve as the last update video for Power Square Mall. The mall was just recently sold and it will be closing at the end of October 2021. This footage was filmed on October 16th while the last few remaining tenants were having their closing sales. All that's left are two antique stores, the Bonworth Old Lady Clothes Store, and then an eBay store business that's over on the other end. This mall is much smaller than it used to be. Most of it has been converted to a self-storage place now. But it seemed like they were really going to try and make a serious effort to keep this one last long corridor of the mall alive. However, when the mall's one anchor, which was a VF Factory outlet store, closed, I kinda knew at that point that this mall's days were numbered. When this mall opened in 1987, it was an outlet mall, everything in here was outlet stores. However, over the years, more and more outlet malls have been built, and some of the ones that have been built since this mall opened have already started to die. Another issue with this area is the changing demographics. This Love and Life After 50 magazine's a good example. There used to be a lot of families with young children around here, but now it's a lot of senior citizens that live in the area. I grew up pretty close to this mall and we used to do like back to school shopping and stuff here when I was a kid so it's really weird to see it like this. I mean it's been a dead mall for a lot of years but this is the emptiest and worst I've ever seen it. While it is sad to see another mall that I've covered on this channel over the years permanently close, the good news is that this mall is not going to be demolished. The new owners plan on renovating and repurposing the building. Another good piece of news is something happened that hardly ever happens, and that's the new owners actually reached out to me, letting me know that they would be okay with me coming down and filming and documenting everything one last time before they start making permanent changes. The new owners are Lumos Arts Academy, and they've actually already moved into the mall. They're currently occupying the old VF Factory outlet space, and they were actually nice enough to open that up to me and let me film what they've done in there so far. And I think what they've done so far is pretty creative. They're operating their junior high and high school arts academy out of here, but it's a temporary situation. Once the mall is closed and they're able to renovate everything, this will mostly become offices and the school will actually be out in the renovated mall. Because the situation is temporary in here, they didn't want to spend a ton of money dividing it up into classrooms, so they came up with a pretty ingenious solution, I think. They were able to get a hold of a large stock of doors, and they used those to build temporary walls and classrooms all throughout the old anchor building. And then they've allowed the students to paint those doors. Once the whole Arts Academy is built out into the mall, this will become a K-12 through Arts Academy. They're also repurposing and recycling as many of the fixtures and pieces of furniture and things that have been left throughout the mall. Here's a look inside the computer lab that they've set up. And really, this doesn't look much different from a public school classroom, except for the walls happen to be doors. And this is another one of the classrooms. A lot of the malls that I've covered on this channel over the years have permanently closed. Some of them have been demolished. Other ones have stated that they're going to have redevelopment plans, but nothing ever comes of those. So it really is a breath of fresh air to actually see one of these old malls being repurposed. Here's a shot of one of the art classrooms, and this one's a little bit messier than the other ones, but art is a messy business, so that makes sense. Once they're done using this as a temporary school and they're completely moved into the mall, they plan on actually reusing some of these doors as artwork throughout the main corridors of the school. The plan is to have them hanging from some of the walls and the ceilings and things like that, kind of like the doors in Monsters, Inc. The idea is to preserve some of the history from when the school first opened. Here's another really creative idea. Through that hole you can see there's a mattress between some of these doors. This is one of the music rooms and in order to dampen some of the sound so that it doesn't echo all throughout the old anchor building, they put mattresses between the doors in the music rooms. I just love the way that they're repurposing and recycling things in order to do things more cost effectively. This is also interesting. This is the old dressing room for the VF Factory outlet store, and they're using this as the backstage area for the drama department. You can see some of the costumes hanging back there. It's so weird being in here now because I can distinctly remember trying on clothes in these dressing rooms when we were doing back-to-school shopping when I was a kid. 
And here's a look inside the temporary auditorium they've built. Now, unfortunately, it is pretty dark in here, but you can see the seats, and there's a stage here as well. Once everything's in its permanent home, they do plan on having performances open to the community, so I think that's pretty great too. Here's a look inside the dance studio they put together, and I love that they used a lot of old mirrors instead of spending money on a big mirrored wall that's going to be temporary. Some of these doors are pretty neat. I love the piranha plant there over to the right. And I'm recognizing some artwork from other franchises as well. I love the fact that they're going to reuse some of these as art throughout the school and that, you know, keeping a part of the school's history is important to them. I also love that preserving some of the mall's history was important to them and that they invited me to come out and do that. So thank you Lumos Arts Academy for the opportunity to come out and document Power Square Mall one last time and also showing me what you've done so far so that I can show it to everybody else. You know, something I've always loved about this mall is all of the live mall plants. That is something I'm going to miss. We're down here on the other end of the mall from where we started, and this is that eBay store business I was talking about. It looks like they were running their eBay store out of this mall, and now they're kind of clearancing out all of their inventory. If you haven't seen my other videos on Power Square Mall, I would definitely recommend checking them out, especially some of the older ones. Some of the footage isn't the best, but you can get an idea of how big this mall used to be. Back when I first started covering this mall a few years ago, there were still national stores in here. There were a couple of antique stores, but there was also a dress barn outlet, there was a corningware outlet, there was a vitamin world. And there was even a Mesa Public Library branch in this mall, and I don't think they had planned on going anywhere, but unfortunately a few years ago there was a huge storm that damaged part of the mall's roof and the whole library was flooded out. I don't know, seeing this empty chair is kind of eerie. That's where the bird guy used to sit, and if you watch my older videos on this mall, you'll see what I'm talking about. This was the last food option left in the mall. This was a kettle corn stand, and they sold some other snacks and things as well. They were here moving out the last of their equipment while I was here filming. Man, I've always loved the ceilings in this mall with the big skylights. I know a lot of people don't like the look of this mall. I think its only real problem is the colors. I do love the ceilings and the industrial look of it though. Now right on the other side of that wall is the storage facility. And in here it looks like they're storing all of those old vintage coin-op rides. I asked about these vintage coin-op rides while I was here filming because I had delusions of grandeur of maybe buying one of them, but it turns out the new owners plan on keeping these as well and using them as decor and stuff throughout the elementary school part of the Arts Academy. These vintage coin-op rides were another thing that I always loved about this mall. I did notice the Batmobile looks like it's missing though. That was my favorite one. I really don't see these types of things around stores and places anymore, so it was always really cool to have such a concentration of them here. This really was one of my favorite dead malls, even when it became, you know, less than half the mall it used to be. I did still enjoy kind of roaming around this one main corridor, and it was always a lot of fun to check out the antique stores. I'm also going to miss this spot. This was the Gala Apple, which closed a while ago, and before that it was a Swenson's ice cream stand. But when it was the Gala Apple, they did have really great sandwiches. The Gala Apple closing was another sign in my head that the Smalls days were definitely numbered. Yeah, I really am going to miss strolling through this mall, even if it is just the one corridor now. It's a pretty unique place, and I don't think I've seen any other mall quite like it. And like I mentioned earlier, I do have a lot of childhood memories of shopping here back when it was in its prime, between the back-to-school shopping and my mom really just liking to look through outlet stores in general. There was even a KB Toys outlet store here now that I think about it. I remember buying a few old Sega Master System games there way after the Sega Master System was relevant. I think the PlayStation 1 may have been out at that point. I am also going to kind of miss the skylights and ceilings in here. Although they aren't technically going anywhere, I just won't have easy access to them anymore. I think of all the malls that I've covered that have now closed, this one has probably had the happiest ending. I mean, the mall is permanently closing, but the building is going to be repurposed and reused. And I think that's a much more dignified ending for a mall than meeting a wrecking ball or sitting empty and rotting until a wrecking ball is necessary. 
It'll also be interesting to see if this mall closing has any effect on Superstition Spring Center, which is pretty much right down the street from here. Like, I wonder if that Bon Worth old lady clothes store ends up moving to Superstition Spring Center, because there are some vacancies there. I'm also happy that these mall plants probably won't die. You know, when I went through and filmed Metro Center Mall after it closed, it was just planter after planter with a dead plant in it. Like the coin-op rides, the mall plans on using all of these potted plants as well. I think the only thing about this mall I won't miss are the floors. By the time this video comes out, this mall will probably have about a week left, so if you want to check it out before it closes, your time is really running short. What are your thoughts on Power Square Mall, though? Is this a place that you have memories shopping at? I'd love to hear about them down in the comments below. Also, I'd like to thank Lumos Arts Academy one more time for letting me come down here and document Power Square Mall. That's going to wrap it up, though, for this last trip to Power Square Mall. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this last update video on Power Square Mall. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and if you've got a few minutes, why not check out one of these other videos I've got here. And also, lastly, make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.